Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to r slash I don't work here, lady, where Karens continue to mistake regular Joe Schmo customers as employees for our entertainment. And the stories are absolutely hilarious. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's lineup. Hit subscribe if you haven't, and the email will be posted right here for story submissions. Okay, so I just wanted to share a story of the time I worked at Walmart. I worked there over a decade ago. I'm currently a 62-year-old woman. So on this day, I wasn't scheduled to work, but I had to run in to buy something as it was my granddaughter's birthday. Anywho, I'm in the store when a woman asked if I know where she can find a certain inflatable swimming pool for her kids. Off the top of my head, I told her exactly what aisle and where to look to find it. The woman then waited in front of me, just staring blankly at me. I asked her if she needed anything else, and she told me to walk her there, as that's my job. She says she recognizes me from cash, as I've checked her out many times before. I tell her that yes, I do work here, but I'm off for the day. She tells me it's just one item, for me to walk her there, because if she doesn't find it, she'll come looking for me again. So I give in. I walk her to the item saying, hey, I'm not working today, but I will help you find this one item. So once we're done, I walk away and the woman has the audacity to say, hey, if you decide to help people on your day off, you should at least put on a uniform so people know you work here. So after she said that, I was speechless. I told her again that I didn't work today. I can't just put on a uniform on my days off. I told her she happened to spot me while I was grabbing some items. I then find out the next shift from my manager that she apparently went to customer service and complained about me helping her, and how I lied to her that I didn't work there to avoid helping her. But the biggest kicker is that she told my manager that I wasn't wearing a uniform while on shift. Now I did see her again while I was on cash the following week. We made eye contact while she was looking for an open register and she avoided me. I continued working there for another year and often saw her and she never came to my cash register ever again. Guys, I am shaking my head at that. The audacity of that woman to get help and then turn around to do something like that, right? And the crazy thing is, she knows she did OP dirty because she avoided her forever after that. If there's anything I've learned from reading these stories is that people are often punished for being nice. Like, this is one of the situations where OP literally couldn't win. If she helped the woman, the woman complains. If she refused to help the woman, the woman still would have complained. So this happened in the late 1980s at Denver Stapleton. I'm an airline pilot, and I've just commuted in from Houston to pick up a trip originating in Denver. So here I am, strolling down the concourse in my uniform with my suitcase and my chart bag in tow. Out of nowhere, a woman loudly says, Hey, bellboy, get my bags to gate 34. She then dumps her bags in my vicinity and walks off. Now I consider them for a moment, and I also consider that I'm also headed for gate 34. Thoughts run through my mind, one of which is that I really don't want this woman getting on my flight. So I consider my options, ignore the bags, and consider my happy stroll to gate number 34. At some point, the woman realizes that I've ignored her request, and she comes jogging after me. The woman begins shrieking. At one point in her tirade, she bellows, I'm not gonna tell you this again. To which I replied, oh, good, I'm glad you're not gonna tell me again, now please stop bothering me. So she of course pursued me all the way to the gate, leaving her luggage in the middle of the concourse. I was then greeted by the gate agent and asked her to unlock the jetway for me so I could get down to the airplane. As she headed for the jetway, the shrieking lady grabs her by the arm and yells, hey, you are not gonna let that damn bellboy escape. He left my bags, I want him to go back to get them, or I'm gonna get him fired. The gate agent smiled and happily said, Captain, do you want to deny boarding to this individual? I replied, yes, safety of flight, she's irrational and possibly intoxicated. The gate agent then said, I'll call security and do the paperwork. Have a nice flight. Now I never got to see the look on the woman's face when she was told she wasn't allowed on the flight, but I can't imagine it went well. Oof, don't mess with the captain. Like some people are so delusional that they assume everybody in uniform is meant to serve them, right? And I hope that woman learned her lesson that day. I'd also love to hear what the heck she told her friends and family as to why she wasn't allowed on a flight that day. Yeah, so I acted all crazy, made a huge mistake by yelling at the captain, telling him to get my bags. It's such a funny story. I thought he was a bellboy. So back when I was younger, I had a job at a small market in our city central. Usually, you can work from the age of 15 to 17, but as soon as you turn 18, you will most likely get fired. Because once you turn 18, your salary increases a lot. This is important for later. 
So for the past two years, I worked at the same shop, sitting at a desk. But since I was nearing 18, I knew I couldn't stay. This meant I knew I was about to get fired. And sure enough, a week before I turned 18, I was told I was fired. I told my boss I knew why, that it was understandable, since the small shop needed to save as much money as possible, since the income and profit was low, for being a city market, and not some big shopping center. I get a bonus for being fired, and decided to keep this bonus to use on something special. So one day weeks later, I see that the same shop just got in some extremely expensive and unique food products, imported from around the world. And out of pure curiosity, I went there to buy some myself. So I arrived to a really busy shop, having many customers wanting to buy all sorts of beers, sausages, and so on. But I had my eyes set on one thing. American candy. I live in Europe, and American candy isn't really being sold much in my country. So I was drooling from the thought of getting to try some of those big products I hear about on the internet. I went to take some of the candy and put it in my basket, and here steps in a male Karen. So male Karen was one of the most greedy customers we've ever had. When I still worked there, whenever there was a discount or something special, he would take as much as he could, not letting other customers buy any. It got so bad that we had to put up signs that said that each customer may only purchase X amounts of this product. The male Karen sees me. He then walks up to me and says, Hey, are you packing these away? To which I laugh and say, no, I'm just picking these for myself. He then says to me, but you are working. You can purchase some when you're free from work. I tell him, I'm sorry, but I don't work here anymore. I'm a customer just like you. To which he says, yes, you do. I saw you working some weeks ago at the counter. I tried to tell him again that I recently got fired since turning 18. He then says to me, don't lie. I'm going to call your boss and you're going to get in some serious trouble for stealing the products that are meant for customers. I tell him, you can call him, it's not a joke, I really got fired since turning 18. The Karen then begins screaming how I was being disrespectful, how I shouldn't be working in the store anymore, and how I was stealing and packing away special products from the customers so they couldn't buy any. At this point, I was getting pretty pissed at the guy, since myself and the boss already knew that he was a sour, bitter old man. But he always kept telling me that he was a good, loyal, paying customer. I told the Karen to call my former boss and ask him if I still work there. Out of nowhere, the greedy man starts to take things out of my basket where I had my products. He then screams at me and says, These don't belong to you. Stop shopping right now. That's when I screamed at him for being so entitled and disrespectful, saying that he was the issue, since I admitted that I didn't work there. I then stopped screaming in the old man's face when I saw two police officers walk down the hall towards me. I got pale because I knew it looked really bad since I was just done screaming my face off at the guy. The officers walk over, holds up one hand to grab my attention, where I just stare at him directly in the eyes. Now, the Karen hasn't seen him yet. He then gets really angry and decides to slap push me and punch me in the stomach, making me drop my basket I was holding in my hands. Now, it didn't really hurt. It just took me by surprise. The two police officers then went from walking and holding eye contact with me to running at us and looking at the man. They handcuffed the man and called my boss, confirming with the camera which has sound that the man was causing trouble and that I told him that I didn't work at the store anymore. The officers told me that they had a call from one of the bystanding customers, which got worried because they heard the word stealing being yelled in the store. And then they saw a man causing a tantrum. I left with my American candy that day and an apology from my boss, saying they should have done something about him before this happened. Apparently this wasn't the first time that that man left the store in handcuffs. Guys, I'm not sure why the man was allowed back in the store. Now, I know the boss said he was a good, loyal, paying customer, but really, did he really buy that much and was that important to the bottom line that the owner would allow him to repeatedly abuse customers and staff? Like to me, if you're ever leaving a store in handcuffs, that's a lifetime ban. So my dad was one of the three bosses in a big movie theater. We, his kids, always got free movie tickets, which was great. And during holidays, we were there almost every day, seeing new movies, and of course between the movies, helping the employees who were working. So it was one of those nights. I was like 15 or 16 years old. I was helping at the popcorn and candy selling station by preparing orders, stocking drinks, cleaning counters, all the good stuff. So as I was not officially working here, I wasn't allowed to use the cash register. Only the employees had access to their own portable till. It was a Saturday night, so there were a lot of people, and we were working on chain, not talking, when a man comes. He then moves all the customers who are waiting in line, and he demands to be served quickly, as his movie was about to begin. Customers grumble a bit, but no one says anything. 
So of course we run into bad luck and the cash station's computer was freezing up. My friend who worked officially tells him that he's not the only person in here and that he needs to go to the back of the line in order to be served fairly. So of course, hearing that, the guy goes crazy. He starts yelling at my friend, yelling at the customers and says, Who do you think you are? You are nothing. Move yourself and get my order ready, stupid girl. Now, my friend is a very sensitive girl. She was 19 at the time. And I see the yelling is troubling her. Now, this goes on for like two minutes, thanks to the system that's frozen. She's about to cry, so I decide to interfere, even if I wasn't allowed to do such thing. I tell him, sir, you're gonna have to wait silently or leave. The computer's freezing. We can't do anything about it, so stop yelling, please. The guy then looks at me and screams, and you, you useless kid, can't you take the order on the other register? Now I'm thinking, thanks, Captain Obvious, I didn't think about that before, and I say, no, sir, I can't. The guy then gets even angrier, and he says, you, you don't know who you're talking to. I then say to him, no, sir, I don't. He then tells me, I know the boss here, I will get you fired. Don't even come to work tomorrow, because you are fired already, I know the boss. To which I say, oh, really, do you? He then says to me, are you effing questioning me? I said I know the owner. I then say to him, not as much as I know him, sir, he's my father. The man then looks at me, turns all flustered and red, and backs off and leaves. I'm 27 today, and my friend is still talking about this story 10 years later. Now I didn't do it on purpose, I was just stating facts and nothing more. At the time, when I told him the story that night, my dad was actually mad at me because in his mind, I wasn't allowed to stand up for my friend, even though the customer's a jerk, as I didn't work there. It was a rough night for both of us. Now we're laughing about it together, he's retired, and he thinks I did the best thing I could have done at the time. Guys, if I were OP, I would have played out the whole my dad is the owner thing and said, Sir, I don't need your $9 bad enough to let you abuse my employees. Now get the heck out of here. Like how friggin' entitled is that though, right? Pushes a whole crowd of customers aside saying that his movie is about to start. Well, sir, join the many other people who are also in line buying popcorn and candy because their movie's about to start too. Like some people truly think the world revolves around them, right? Okay, so I used to work at the customer service desk at a large grocery chain in Pennsylvania. By far, the most common call we got was people asking for the pharmacy. So for us, and a lot of large chain stores, the pharmacy is its own separate little business in all respects, except for sharing the building. Think of it like two stores in a shopping mall. They had a different name, different staff, different logo, different everything. For us, we weren't even on the same phone system for privacy reasons. So when people would ask to speak to the pharmacy, the only thing we could do was give them the information to connect to the pharmacy directly. We'd often get people who call and begin spilling their medical history before you could stop them. But this was one of my most favorite calls. So based on the voice, this was likely an adult in their 30s or 40s. I pick up and say, hey, thanks for calling large grocery store. My name's Chris. How can I help you? The lady on the other end says, hi. Could you connect me with the pharmacy? I tell her, I'm sorry, I'm unable to transfer you, but I can give you the pharmacy's direct number to call. She says, no, 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 just transfer me. I tell her, I understand, the pharmacy is a separate store and on a different phone line, so my phone here isn't able to transfer you. But I can give you their phone number so you can call them directly. The lady then gets angry and says, so why won't you transfer my call? I say to her, I'm sorry, it's a bit of a pain, I know, I wish I could, but I can't do that because they have their own system so patients don't accidentally leave voicemails with sensitive medical information on the grocery store's phone. But I do have their number ready for you to connect with them directly. With that, the lady says, ugh, fine. So I give her the phone number and about 30 seconds later, my phone rings again. I pick up and say, hey, thanks for calling the grocery store, my name's Chris, how can I help you? It's the lady again. She says, hi. I just spoke to you about calling the pharmacy. I called and they did not answer. Now I can't see the pharmacy from my station, but on Saturday mornings, they were always busy. And given the time between the length of calls, she couldn't have called more than once. I say to her, I'm sorry about that ma'am, it's very possible they're busy. But I'm sure if you call back in a few minutes or if you leave a... She then interrupts me and says, I don't want to leave a message. I want to talk to someone right now. Can't you just call over and ask them to answer the phone? I say to her, ma'am, I want to help, but I can't really force them to answer the... She then interrupts me again and says, I'm going to hang up and call them. You go over there right now and tell them to answer the damn phone when I'm calling. I tell her, ma'am, I'm afraid I can't do that. Like I said, if you call and leave a message... 
She then interrupts me a third time and says, Listen to me. Why won't you help me? Just go over there and tell them to answer the damn phone. Do you even understand what I'm asking you to do? I tell her, ma'am, I do understand what you're asking me to do, and I'm afraid I can't do that, but I can. At this point, she demands to speak to the manager. I tell her, I'm happy to connect you with the pharmacy manager, but I can't transfer you. You have to call them directly. Click. It's so amazing how some people just don't listen. And hey, I understand, if you're calling a pharmacy, it could very well be an emergency. But very unlikely in this situation, because you'd think, you'd think someone would call 911 if it was an emergency, right? So this person comments and says, I've literally told people, why would I not do it if I could? Why would I choose to be yelled at by you? Okay, so a bit of backstory. Back in 2018, when this occurred, I had saved up quite a bit of money from my job as a shift lead in the food industry. So what did I, a 17-year-old male, do with that money? I bought a suit of steel plate armor. Helmet and all. Something I'd always wanted to do ever since I knew what a knight was. So I bought it primarily to wear at the local renaissance festival. But I took every opportunity to put it on that I could. This was the real deal. It was 16 gauge steel, thick leather straps, and over 100 pounds altogether. It could stop a sword. Now at the time, and currently, I stand at about 6 foot 5 inches, and I weigh a grand total of 140 pounds soaking wet. Now, I'm not the most intimidating on my own, but with the armor on, I was pretty scary, or so I've had people tell me. Anyway, on to the story. So that October, my mom signed up my entire family to volunteer at a nearby hospital's trunk or treat the Saturday before Halloween, a night I had off work. So I suit up, and the rest of my family got into their Red and Fest costumes, and off we went. When we arrived, we report to the event director, the real manager, and we were assigned our duties. My parents were to hand out candy from the back of their car and keep an eye out on the kids walking through, like most adults. The youngest of my siblings was 11 and was sent to help oversee some of the games going on inside and around the hospital, and the oldest was sent with me. And what was my wondrous task, you ask? I was a glorified traffic cone. So my job was to stand at one of the entrances of the parking lot the event was taking place in and keep cars from driving through. If you're here to join Trunk or Treat, go around the hospital to the exit side of the lot, and someone else will direct you further. If you're trying to leave the hospital, sorry bud, you're gonna have to turn around. There's no exit here. There was another entrance, but volunteers took care of it. And mine was where the line of Trunk or Treaters would wait while another group went through. Now it did make sense to put me there though. If you didn't notice the glow stick lanyard all volunteers were wearing, you definitely noticed the hulking 6 foot 5 guy encased in reflective steel standing in your headlights. And if you somehow didn't, I had a much better chance of surviving getting hit. So there I stand for two and a half hours, directing traffic and taking pictures with a few of the kids waiting in line. Most of the kids were a bit scared of me, but with some encouragement from their parents and a lift of my helmet's visor to show that I was indeed a person under the medal, they became excited to meet a real knight. So sometime between two and a half hours to three hours on duty, I hear a bit of yelling coming from the other parking lot entrance. I didn't think much of it, because there's people around being loud, especially kids, so I keep keeping on. And then a moment later, as I finish another photo op, there's a tap on my pauldron, which is my shoulder armor. I turn, and there stands one of the volunteers from the other entrance, looking a bit exasperated. The guy says to me, Hey man, sorry to bother you, but can you come with me for a moment? We could really use your help over here. Now, I was a bit confused at that, wondering if maybe someone needed a bathroom break and needed me to take over or something. So I say sure, and I followed him back. As we got closer, the shouting gets louder, and I start to make some sense out of it. I hear, I don't care what the F is going on tonight, I want to leave through here. The other exit goes to such and such road, and the construction there is a pain in the ass. Where the F is your supervisor? I'll make him make you let me through. This is ridiculous. Don't you have any blah 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 blah? Now, I see a car stopped at the second entrance, and a red-faced man was in the driver's seat with the window down, tearing into the second volunteer traffic cone. As we approached, the guy who grabbed me runs ahead, blocking the man's view of me as I got closer. The volunteer then says to the guy, All right, man, here's the manager like you wanted. The guy then screams and says, It's about effing time. He'd better not be an R-word like you two. I swear to God, I will... Now, at this point, the volunteer who had me follow him step aside, and I came forward, right next to the car's window, and the jerkwad's mouth dropped. His face went a few shades lighter as I lumbered to a stop, and I asked, What's the problem here? Finally figuring out what was going on. 
I might have also made my voice a little deeper than it actually was. The man stares at me for a couple of seconds, mouth agape. Now I'm still not sure what was worse for him. The beast in the medieval armor, or the fact that he saw his own stupid face reflected in my visor. When he finally finds his voice again, he sort of pointed ahead of him and mumbled, uh, I just want to leave through here because the traffic is really bad the other way because of construction. I didn't let him finish. I folded my arms, which wasn't exactly easy, and say, Seriously? Do you see all the kids running around? The big line, the cars, the games, and you still want to drive through here, especially with that mouth of yours? If anyone's an effing R-word here, it's definitely not me or these guys. The man stammers and says, but, but, I then tell him, nope. Don't want to hear it. Stop shouting at my buddies, turn around, and leave. The way that isn't full of kids, or I'll have the hospital security come deal with you. Now, I was loving this. I never got to talk to people like this at my actual job. Without a word, he rolls up his window, puts the car in reverse, and drove away. Once he was gone, the volunteer who grabbed me high-fived his buddy, and then high-fived me. He then says to me, sorry for dragging you into this man, but I couldn't find the actual manager, and the guy was so pissed, and then I saw you, and I knew you'd be perfect. At that I just laughed, I told him it was no trouble, that it was actually very enjoyable. I then took a picture with the volunteers, chatted about my costume, and then finished out the night content with my little revenge against all the Richard craniums in the world. So OP does share a picture of this, and what an awesome costume, guys. And I love how the volunteers thought OP was the perfect guy to deal with that idiot. Honestly, I'd be pretty freaked out too if I saw a dude in a suit of armor approaching me. But look at this, what a cool suit of armor, right? So I was trying to browse the comments to see how much a suit of armor like that would cost, but OP never said anything about that. I'm assuming it can't be cheap. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here, lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the stories today. If you missed the last episode, it's in our slash entitled people, where OP gets his car stolen after he refuses to sell it. It's such a crazy story, so go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.